Live from Idaho's News Channel 7, this is today's Morning News. More evacuation recommendations caused by the soda fire. It has now burned more than 218,000 acres and counting. We'll have a live report on what happened overnight and where these recommended evacuations happen. Plus, crews are keeping an eye on the site of that fire in the foothills overnight. They stopped it yesterday just before it reached homes. Very grateful homeowners today. And welcome to today's morning news. I'm Maggie O'Meara. Doug is on vacation today. We start with this new overnight for you. A fast moving lightning storm moved through the Magic Valley overnight and sparked several fires. Twin Falls and Jerome County Dispatch say the first reports of fires came in at 1130 last night, but most of those fires were knocked down by 130. These are pictures of the lightning and uh, viewers sent them into us. You could see just how strong those lightning strikes were that started the fires there and the soda fire continues to burn that fire has now grown to more than 218,000 acres and growing to give you an idea of just how big that is that's over 31 miles long dean johnson is live from the incident command and dean what's the latest we hear there were some evacuation recommendations overnight tell us about that well that's right Maggie. uh the hawaii county sheriff's office sent out a text message recommending that people from the Givens Hot Springs area to the Hard Trigger area leave their houses. These were not mandatory evacuations. They were just advising of people because of a flare up from the soda fire because of the high winds that happened over a night. In fact, there is a briefing right here. The activity here is really picked up as there's a briefing scheduled for six o'clock where we're going to learn a lot more of the information about what happened overnight and the approach uh, that the uh, all the fire agencies are taking to uh, to help contain this fire is right now it's 11 percent so if you don't mind i'm actually going to make this really brief as i head in there to get all of this information so that i can uh, report it right back to you guys um, and the viewers uh, once we have all that information all right that's good to know so that evacuation recommendation was made a lot of people decided to stay as they so often do in this circumstance but it's still in place and recommended just in case of the conditions there. Dean's going to continue to gather information. He's going to go to that meeting right now and then bring us the latest that he finds out from the incident command. Idaho Power Crew is still working to restore power to hundreds of customers affected by the soda fire. This is video of workers replacing more than 100 power poles along with hundreds of miles of power lines. They've put a generator in place as a temporary solution there for people, but they're warning customers to please limit your energy use. Right now, let's get outside at 6.03. Wow, it is a warm start to your morning. Right now, it is 81 degrees. It was 84 just about a half hour ago, Jim. That's right, and 90 degrees just after midnight, so it stayed very, very warm, but we are starting to drop off a little bit, so 81, I don't know if that feels better than the 84. But southerly winds are responsible for those temperatures staying up all night long. Had a few clouds go through, a few isolated showers, a little more thunderstorm activity over toward the Magic Valley, but that's since cleared out. Southeast winds at 13 miles per hour, occasionally gusting up over 20 miles per hour, keeping temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s around the valley right now. 74 in Twin Falls and about 60 degrees up in most of the mountains valleys and here are the winds mainly out of the southeast right down along the Snake River and heading on into eastern Oregon so it's going to stay breezy and that's a problem for the firefighters of course we still have red flag warnings for the fire danger in eastern Oregon where a cold front will be approaching by afternoon and that'll cause more gusty winds that cold front will slide into southwest Idaho later on this evening so that will offer a little relief here are those thunderstorms that moved up through the area earlier gone from our region. No rain reported here in southwestern Idaho. We're looking at a high of 97 degrees today, Maggie. There will be periods of smoke on our way to the 80s by tomorrow, so big improvement. That's a cool down after yesterday, Jim. Thank you for that. Well, happening today for the first time in more than 50 years, the American flag will fly above a U.S. embassy in Havana, Cuba. Secretary of State John Kerry will be in the Cuban capital for that ceremony. The U.S. and Cuba severed diplomatic ties in 1961 and reestablished those formal ties on July 20th of this year. We want to mention I-84 is back open between Baker City and Pendleton. It was closed yesterday because of the Cornette fire. That fire is burning about 13,000 acres in central Oregon near Baker City. So far, there have been no reports of structural damage. It's only 10% contained right now.
Overnight, firefighters have been keeping a very close eye on the site of that Foothills fire in Boise. It started yesterday at around 1 near Villa Ridge Way and Erie Way. These aerial photos from the BLM show just how close the Erie fire came to nearby neighborhoods. Photojournalist Destin Leverett shows us the impact it had on those people. So you can see that this fire burned right up to some homes and uh, by quick action by our uh, Boise Fire and BLM, we were able to save them so far. Seriously, it was like just troops descended. <laughs> You know, it was scary. She was she was very scared. I'm just so grateful. I was out back running my dog, playing with her, smelled smoke, went inside, and my mom uh, smelled the smoke when I came in. She asked me what it was. I thought it was a barbecue. I could smell the smoke from the, coming in through the garage into the house, and I was like, do you smell that smoke? So I went out through my garage and saw the fire line, and the wind was blowing right um, so fast, and you could see the fire just spreading in all directions. Scared, very scared. Uh, my mom evacuated us, took our dog, got in the car, went down to the base of the hill until they got all the fire out. Having the fact that we might lose our home, it's a tough thought to get around. It's hot, it's dry, um, it's just waiting for a heat source. So we just need everybody to be careful, especially in the foothills. See the neighbors out there working to protect their defensible space. The Erie fire burned about 60 acres. Boise firefighters say it was started by a construction worker who was using a circular saw in the area. A spark was carried by the wind into some dry brush, and that's how it all began. A hay truck headed for BLM corrals caught fire south of CUNA. The driver noticed as he was pulling in and used heavy machinery to topple the bales and spread it out. The CUNA Fire Department and BLM crews were able to put out the flames, but it did burn about five acres of land there. In Kamii, 27 new wildfires sparked in the Nez Perce Clearwater National Forest. Forest officials say lightning has sparked more than 150 fires on forest land since Monday. On one of those fires, the Fisher Fire, that's torched 700 acres so far. Getting the resources, though, to all of these fires is difficult because of larger fires burning around the West. The fires are prioritized on a national level, and at this time, fire managers are having a hard time filling orders around the country. On the and a very warm night underway, and that's not helping the fire situation at all. Temperatures are as warm now as they're going to be in many areas tomorrow afternoon because of a cold front on the way through. That's kept temperatures up into the 80s most of the night. Also, breezy conditions. Southeast winds at about 13 miles per hour at the airport, but occasionally gusting up over 20 miles an hour, and at one point during the night, 41 miles per hour at the airport as we had a few showers roll through. Now, yesterday, we hit 106, and that heat just stuck around. It was 90 degrees at midnight and uh, only has dropped to 81 degrees so far. The normal is 91 degrees. We'll still be above normal this afternoon, but yesterday's 106 will be replaced by temperatures in the upper 90s this afternoon, so a little bit of relief anyway. Won't be breaking any records, fortunately, today. Well, what we are looking at, too, is temperatures still in the mid to upper 70s and low 80s around the Treasure Valley right now. Twin Falls is still in the mid-70s and in the 60s in the mountain areas. And we had some thunderstorm activity. Moisture rolling up out of the southwest, moved through Nevada, up to the Magic Valley and the Central Mountains, and is now dissipating onto the northeast, and it cleared up behind it. But it did trigger some fires because of lightning in the uh, Buell, Hagerman area, and possibly some brief heavy rainfall as those showers went by very quickly. But no measurable rainfall in most of the rest of southwest Idaho, where we had a few isolated showers around the Treasure Valley, but nothing reported recently in the ground. Now, we do have the winds out of the southeast. That's what's causing the warm temperatures draining down the Snake River Valley and on into eastern Oregon. That's uh, stirring up the fire lines and not a good thing there. But by afternoon with the front moving through, those winds will switch around from the northwest and be with us through tomorrow. So looks like we may see some gusts with that front up around 45 miles per hour when it moves through late today. We have the low pressure system off the Oregon coast that will move on across eastern Washington and into southern Canada in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours or so. The moisture coming up from the south into Idaho triggering these thunderstorms and bringing that warm air up in ahead of it. The cold front will move through eastern uh, Oregon, but it is going to be a dry cold front for the most part. A few isolated showers may be triggered ahead of it. Gusty winds with the front, but once it clears through southwest Oregon, uh, southeast Oregon and southwest Idaho late this afternoon and this evening, the winds will start to die down. So the forecast for the Magic Valley, a little bit breezy today, hot, 
and generally dry after this morning's showers of clearing away and 96 degrees for a high in Twin Falls, 93 in Jerome. Mountain areas will be up into the 80s, 83 for Sun Valley. Slight chance of thunder showers, but that's diminishing this morning. And for the Western Mountains, also an isolated shower or two with temperature of 84 in McCall. In the Treasure Valley, mid 90s today, mostly sunny, but looking at breezy conditions. And when that front comes through late this afternoon or evening, we'll see some gusty winds at first and then tapering off after that. Little patchy smoke though, of course, especially in the lower Treasure Valley. And for the upper Treasure Valley, 97 degrees in Boise, Meridian, Cuna, and Eagle, 98 in Mountain Home. Tomorrow, much cooler. That cold front this evening will usher in dry but cooler air with tomorrow's high temperature of 85 degrees. That's where we've been overnight here. 89 on Sunday and another front Monday afternoon cools us down to the 80s again by Tuesday. So some relief finally on the way, Maggie. All right. Thank you, Jim, for that. Well, the soda fire is burning up rangeland and displacing animals. Coming up, you're going to hear from some of the people who are helping take in the animals left homeless by this fire. Plus, we have a sneak peek inside the home in Ketchum where author Ernest Hemingway wrote his last works. That's coming up too right now. It's 611 on your Friday, 81 degrees outside right now. Treasure Valley Subways have teamed up with the Boise Police Department and the Boys and Girls Club to raise a bicycle safety awareness for kids. Subway started their Play and Safe program as an incentive to encourage our kids to stay safe and wear proper safety equipment when they ride those bikes. So if a police officer catches us, um, a child on a bike or whatever, wearing their proper gear, uh, that officer, wherever he may be in the city, will reward them with a, a card for uh, Caught You Being Good. And that's the whole point. A Caught You Being Good card. These gift cards are worth $3. They can be redeemed at any Treasure Valley subway. The Idaho home where Ernest Hemingway wrote his last pieces of work before taking his own life in 1961 has been listed on the National Register of Historic Places. This house, located in Ketchum, is a two-story, 2,500-square-foot house where he wrote his last literary pieces, A Movable Feast and The Dangerous Summer. These pictures, taken by former KTVB reporter Jake Putnam, show that the house has been kept in the very same condition since Hemingway lived there nearly 55 years ago. We have a gallery for you on our website if you'd like to check that out. It's pretty interesting, and you can see a lot more there. Just go to KTVB.com. The soda fire is displacing people, animals as it burns and, and covers so much rangeland. And now some people are offering what space they have to pasture animals in need until the fire is taken care of. You're going to hear from them coming up. And on the Bronco Roundup, you'll hear from a player who says he has become a better player after being injured several times. Lacey Grimm is our Facebook friend of the day. She lives in Boise. Thank you for watching Lacey TGIF. If you want to be our friend of the day, log on, like our page, Today's Morning News. From News Channel 7, time for 7 First Alert Weather. I'm looking across the country right now. No major problems showing up. There are some clusters of thunderstorms moving through the central plains and they'll enhance again this afternoon. Notice the circulation over the southwest. Right over the four corners we get a high pressure system set up. It turns in a clockwise direction and that's what pumps moisture up through the southwest. And we call that the monsoon. And a lot of it has been pulled up northward into Idaho right now for a few thunder showers during the night. Storm system off the Oregon coast will move on across the northwest and we'll start to see some cooler air finally moving in. In the eastern part of the country, chance for some thunderstorms over the Great Lakes region and scattered over the southeast, but nothing major going on, even though it will be quite warm and humid, and that heat spreads on up into the northeast by tomorrow. So looks like a chance of thunderstorms in some of the major hubs where there could be some delays in air travel because of it. But in the southwest, it's starting to clear up as the monsoon is taking a break there, but it's going to be hot once again. Speaking of hot, we were a record 106 degrees yesterday, and McCall and Mountain Home also tied records for the date. Today, not quite as hot. 97 degrees, still very, very warm, but not in the triple digits. And it will be pretty breezy today with party cloudy skies through the day. And then a front coming in late this afternoon or this evening will bring us a gust of wind and then cool air air will flow in so tomorrow's high around 85 degrees. Watch for some smoke across the area though as the winds shifted around. We need that cooler weather for these firefighters. Thank you Jim and continuing our fire watch coverage. The community is really coming together to help those in need in the soda fire. So many have been worried about their cattle and other livestock and keeping them out of harm's way. News Channel 7's Kim Fields has that story. 
alpaca and then these Marcy Hibbs pasture in Wilder is a little more crowded today. That's because she's taken on animals from friends and relatives in need of help from the soda fire. You kind of feel helpless over here knowing all the trouble and things that people are going through and so we um, just started offering, you know, if anybody needed help with any of their animals, we've got plenty of space here. So far, she's taken on a couple of donkeys and some goats. Residents in Homedale already worried about saving their homes. They also wanted to save their animals. We just kind of get them out of the smoke and um, and then that way they could take care of themselves and her kids if they if they had to evacuate. Once a resident of Homedale herself, Hib says it's heartbreaking to watch the land that so many rely on for their livelihoods burn. To go out at night it's, and you can see the glow over on the hill, it's pretty scary. It's really big, <laughs> bigger than I would have imagined. But fortunately, the help from the community, like Hibbs and her family, now bigger than the fire. In Wilder, Kim Fields, Idaho's News Channel 7. And we have continuing coverage of the soda fire on our Facebook page right now and online at KTVB.com. As we've mentioned, our viewers are helping those who are impacted by the fire, people offering pastures and fenced arenas for stranded cattle and so much more. If you're in need of help, again, be sure to go to our Facebook page and check that out. There are so many great people in this community that want to help. New evacuation recommendations overnight because of this soda fire. Owyhee County dispatchers say the fire jumped fire lines near Wilson, China Ditch and Givens and the hard trigger area. That's coming up next. Good morning, 623 is now the time. Let's take a look outside, show you what's happening with traffic. 81 degrees outside, traffic moving along well at I-84 and 5 Mile. On the Bronco Roundup now, Boise State Nickelback Chancellor James could have his entire collegiate football career summed up in one word, perseverance. Year after year, he's battled injuries. In between each of them, he's offered us a glimpse of his potential. Instead of getting frustrated, Chance got inspired. Each character building moment turning him into the player he is today. KTVB Sports Director Jay Tust reports. Growing up in San Diego, you know, I had uh, four brothers. Boise State Junior Chancellor James learned what it means to be relentless. My older brother always beat me up, and my two younger brothers beat me up, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I always wanted to just keep on fighting. And how to persevere. My mom, she's a fighter. Real life offering him his lessons rather than a simple game. She worked three jobs at one point in time, so I think that's where I get my mentality from. Considering the way his whole collegiate career has gone so far, character is what has carried him. After redshirting in 2012, Chancellor missed the entire 2013 season after tearing his ACL. In 2014, he returned and eventually earned a starting job, only to have it taken away on the third play of the Broncos game at Wyoming in early November. The running back ran out and uh, ran and caught him, uh, landing on my leg wrong. Uh, the trainers told me to stay down and, you know, they told me I tore my ACL. So the fight began again, this one accompanied by a deadline. I was coming back August 4th. Which required him to be back months ahead of schedule. When uh, adversity is uh, throwing that chance, he's going to overcome it. And that's his chance. I remember when he got hurt and obviously he was devastating, but he's a kid. He's just really focused and he's tough. He wasn't going to let this slow him down. The injury took the game away from Chancellor, yet pushed him further into it. Always in the fair room, man, watch him. Good, set, hit. Nonstop all day. From a mental standpoint, you know, I don't think he took a step back. If anything, I think he took a step forward. Me just actually humbling myself and making sure I was coming out every day and being the best that I can, even though I wasn't on the field. As far as the timetable for his recovery, Chance beat it by over a month. Being older and wiser, I knew what shortcuts to take. And was on the practice field for day one of fall camp last week. He has done so much to rehab himself back into where he's at right now and competing for a starting position. As for how he feels now. I feel like Superman. The pain is masked by perseverance. I'm glad to be with my team. His relentless approach, a big reason why they've moved him to a new playmaking position. Right now I'm focusing on nickel. I'm feeling like I'm getting better and I'm ascending if you actually test. I'm not the only one who thinks so though. Just ask his position coach, the guy who actually determines Chancellor's playing time. He was starting to come on before he got injured. For our defense, we need physical players. And so he's a kid that just brings that edge to him. He's going to go out and compete. Um, he's not going to back down, which we really, really like. 
And you can find a lot more fall camp and Bronco preseason coverage on our website right now at KTVB.com. The opener coming up September 4th. We're all really excited about that. Let's get to Jim Duthie, though, and talk about the weather. Jim, yesterday a record 106 degrees. Incredible. That's right. 106 here. That was a broken record. We broke the record. And then 92 degrees in McCall, 105 in Mountain Home. And so the heat continued, and even overnight it stayed quite warm. Now the sun is coming up now. We've got scattered clouds around. 81 degrees, that's cooled down from 85 where it was when I came into work and you came into work this morning. Southeast winds at 13 miles per hour, occasionally gusting over 20 miles an hour. That's one reason why the temperatures have stayed up. And we had a gust overnight of 41 miles per hour. As a few thunder showers rolled up into southern Idaho, especially through the Magic Valley and the Central Mountains, and now is moving on into Montana out of the area triggered some lightning and some fires over in the Buell Hagerman area, but no measurable rainfall for us here in southwest Idaho. What we are watching is a cold front moving in across Oregon later today, and so it will keep us partly cloudy. We'll see temperatures up to the mid to upper 90s once again, not reaching the triple digits fortunately, but it will uh, also lead to breezy conditions and smoke will uh, be variable around the valley from time to time from the fires, and so that may limit visibility from time to time. By tonight, that cold front will move in, bringing some cooler air, clearing skies and 85 degrees. There'll still be some patchy smoke around, but much nicer temperatures as we head into the weekend and early next week. We'll have more on the morning news coming up. Overnight, the soda fire jumped fire lines and caused evacuation recommendations. We'll have the latest coming up in a live report. And a school bus crashed into a New Jersey liquor store, sending 11 kids to the hospital. Plus, as wildfires continue to burn across states, fire officials have raised the threat level to the highest fire danger possible. Today's morning news continues right now. Live from Idaho's News Channel 7, this is today's morning news. The soda fire continues to burn along the Oregon-Idaho border. It's now the second largest fire in the country, and there were more problems overnight. We have word of evacuation recommendations. Our Dean Johnson joins us live from the Incident Command. And Dean, they just got out of a meeting. What happened? Well, actually, Megan, that meeting is uh, just is still going on. I was actually able to uh, sneak out, but the main topic uh, we're on this meeting was the weather. They're expecting a front to come in. Uh, here about midday and with that those winds to really start to pick up. So they've been really the, so far the winds have been going from the southwest. They're expecting them to start going towards the northeast and it really started to show um, over at night around 1:30 this morning. Those winds really picked up and started to spread that fire towards the Gibbons Reynolds area and that's why you the, they had those uh, evacuation recommendations is because of the uh, fire that built up. Now Hawaii County says that they sent out a text message, you know, recommending people and advising people to leave their homes. It was not a mandatory evacuation, but it sounds like they've been able to really get a hold of uh, the fire right in that area. Uh, but that's the main focus. That's where they're going to be focusing on today as they really expect the winds to really start to come out of that uh, direction. Another topic is the heat. They actually had two people, two firefighters that were had to get pulled off of this fire were taken to the hospital due to dehydration. So that's another thing that they're going to be monitoring. So really the uh, main focus on the fire today is winds and heat. So that's really what they're going to be looking for. Dehydration. Wow, we didn't hear about that until this morning. Thank you, Dean, for that. We'll keep you posted on how those firefighters are doing. And Dean will get more information from the scene as soon as they come out of that meeting. We'll keep you updated throughout the morning. That incident command meeting is still ongoing. Here's a look outside now at 633. It is a warm start to the morning. 81 degrees right now. It was about 85 when I came into work this morning, Jim. So the temperature dropping a little bit as it usually does, but we're going to heat up again. We certainly are. And even though uh, Dean was telling us about the wind switching a little bit, and firefighters concerned about that, we will start to see that change as the cold front is approaching. The exact timing on it still kind of iffy and it's kind of crucial about as far as the winds are concerned. Now we do have some breaks in the cloud cover that came through overnight and the southeasterly winds have died down a little bit, but still just breezy enough to keep the temperature up. 81 degrees currently, 
Southeast winds at 13 miles per hour. We've been down to 81 so far, but we were 90 just after midnight. 70s in most valley areas right now, but we are expecting to see temperatures remaining on the warm side for the next several hours. And uh, the winds out of the southeast occasionally gusting up to 17, 18 miles per hour. And uh, the red flag warnings for fire danger continue in eastern Oregon and also for Owyhee County as well because of the threat of the wind and the heat combining today. Thunderstorms overnight moved on quickly on through the Magic Valley and the Central Mountains out of the way. It did trigger some fires though down around Buell and Hagerman, but no measurable rainfall here and just a trace over in the Magic Valley. We're looking at smoky skies in many areas around the valley depending upon the wind. High temperature of 97 degrees this afternoon. That's cooler than 106 yesterday, but we're going to be even cooler behind this front, which will put us into the 80s by tomorrow. New this morning, a firefighter was shot outside a house on Staten Island. Police say U.S. Marshals were serving a warrant when a man set a fire and then shot at first responders. This firefighter fortunately was not seriously hurt. Right now, the man who shot the firefighter is in a standoff with police. Homes in this area have been evacuated. You can see crews out there. We'll keep you posted on what happens. <clears throat> and 11 kids were taken to hospitals after their school bus smashed into a New Jersey liquor store. The bus driver says the brakes failed and she lost control of the bus, hitting an SUV and then slamming into the side of the store. Yesterday, investigators checking the bus for mechanical issues. And take a look at this extraordinary amateur video that captures those massive explosions at a container storage area in China. This is just amazing. This cell phone video shows Wednesday's first explosion. It's been more than 36 hours now since the explosions and fires are still burning on the site. At least 50 people were killed in those blasts. Back on the fire watch now, Ada County Dispatch says fire crews are still watching the aftermath of that 60 acre fire that burned near homes in the Boise foothills. There were some scary moments yesterday. The fire was reported when it came within 50 yards from homes near Villa Ridge and Erie Way. I could smell the smoke from the coming in through the garage into the house and I was like, do you smell that smoke? And we knew there's been so many fires here in the valley or area and um, it just concerned me because I was continuing to smell it and was working in the house and so I went out to my garage and saw the fire line and the wind was blowing right um, so fast and you could see the fire just spreading in all directions. Homeowners were outside using hoses to wet down their backyards until Boise Fire, Eagle Fire and the Bureau of Land Management showed up and did their job so well. No one was hurt. The Boise Fire Department says that fire was started by a construction worker using a circular saw. A spark was carried by the wind into some dry brush. All those homes were saved. Incredible. Thank you to all those fire crews. Well, I-84 has reopened after two wildfires burning south of Baker City forced a closure between Ontario and Pendleton. This is video of the drive that an area viewers sent to us just to show you how smoky and fire filled it was. The Bureau of Land Management in Oregon is fighting the Windy Ridge Fire and the Cornette Fire. They've nearly burned 30,000 acres combined. Crews are also working on the Bendire complex 12 miles north of Juntura. It's the second time this has happened, the closure here because of a fire in two weeks. But once again, it is back open today for commuters. Also on the fire watch, the West Scriver fire in the Boise National Forest has now spread to 600 acres. About 200 firefighters are in Crouch working to get a handle on that one. And this doesn't happen very often. The National Interagency Fire Center has raised the national fire preparedness level to the highest it can be. We're talking a level five. That means there are many large wildfires at the same time and all firefighting resources are being used. NIFC has to take into account all wildfires in the U.S. Right now, there are more than 60 across 13 states at a level five. Fires could be threatening people or private property and the potential for new fires is high. Well, if it is a fire that's threatening lives or private property, um, infrastructure, things like that, that's where we're going to concentrate a lot, a lot of our resources. Um, and fires that are more remote, they're not near communities, those fires will still get resources, just not as many as fires that are threatening lives and, and private property. It's been a couple of years since NFC has raised the fire preparedness level to a five. From News Channel 7, time for 7 First Alert Weather. With all the hot, dry weather and the windy conditions, the fire danger, of course, still remains high and the active fires will be 
probably uh, affected quite a bit by the wind uh, throughout the day. Now looking off toward the foothills, we see a beautiful sunrise beginning to develop, but mostly clear skies to the east, but of course smoky to the west and south because of the soda fire and smoke from eastern Oregon. 81 degrees right now, it never really cooled off much at all during the night. 90 degrees just after midnight, still 85 when we came into work this morning and 81 now. Southeast winds at 13 miles an hour with gusts up to 25 miles per hour occasionally around parts of southwestern Idaho. And uh, 91 is the normal high temperature, so uh, we are very, very unusually warm. Normal low is 60 and we are in the 80s. Yesterday was a record-breaking 106, so we'll cool off a little bit today by about 10 degrees, but that still puts us in the mid to upper 90s. And then cooler air coming in by tomorrow with a front due in late today. 81 in Boise right now, mid to upper 70s throughout the rest of the Treasure Valley from Ontario and clear over into the Twin Falls area. Had some thunderstorms roll up through the Magic Valley during the night. Didn't produce much rain, but certainly did produce a lot of lightning and some new fire starts around Buell and Hagerman. Yesterday morning had some record rainfall at Jerome with a cloud burst of four tenths of an inch, but not so much during the night. And as we look at those thunderstorms that rolled up past the Magic Valley and the Central Mountains, notice there was some heavy rain with them in some spots, but they've cleared the Sun Valley area and moved on up to the northeast and things have cleared up behind it. Over southwestern Idaho there were a few scattered showers that went by but no rain reached the ground that has been reported and that's all cleared up as well this morning. There's still enough instability around for an isolated shower or thunderstorm here or there in southwest Idaho but not much of a chance because we have those breezy south easterly winds down the Snake River Valley and uh, gusting up to about 16 miles per hour in Napa right now. So that's died down a little bit from where it was earlier during the night. Low pressure travels from the coast of Oregon across eastern Washington tonight and up into southern Canada. Ahead of it, moisture and warm air coming up through Idaho. And then the front itself will start moving across central Idaho or central Oregon and towards southeastern Oregon by afternoon crossing into southwestern Idaho by evening. Ahead of it, winds shifting a little bit, but after the front passes, northwesterly winds and drier, cooler air coming in on through tonight and tomorrow. So for the Magic Valley, we're looking at hot, dry conditions after the morning showers have gone by. Mostly sunny by this afternoon, 96 degrees in Twin Falls and breezy, 93 in Jerome, 91 in Burley. Mountain areas staying in the 80s today. Still a chance for a thunderstorm or two, although the best chance has passed by already this morning. 83 in Sun Valley, 84 degrees in McCall. And for the Western Treasure Valley, we're looking at mostly sunny conditions with areas of smoke and temperatures in the mid 90s this afternoon. A little bit breezy on through the afternoon and evening. When that front comes through, there could be some strong wind gusts with it at first. The wind's coming in out of the northwest through the evening and dying down overnight. For the upper Treasure Valley, Boise, 97 degrees today and some areas of smoke shifting around throughout the Treasure Valley through the afternoon and evening. By tonight, tomorrow, cooling off. 85 for a high tomorrow, so much, much cooler. Patchy smoke, but mostly sunny. 89 degrees on Sunday. We warm up to the low 90s on Monday, but another front cools us to the 80s on Tuesday. 97 is going to feel like a break after yesterday's 106 degrees. We really do need this cool down, though, for our firefighters. So good news in the forecast for the weekend. Thank you, Jim. A 12 year old All Stars team has claimed the spot in today's semifinal game. We're going to tell you how the West Valley All Stars Little League team is on its way to the Little League World Series later this month if they keep on winning. And one man's hack gives you 86% more Chipotle for no extra cost. That's coming up in What's Trending if you want to get creative with your lunch and save some money, too. 6.42 is now the time. Stay tuned. Good morning right now. Let's take a look at traffic, show you what's going on out there. And uh, currently, traffic here at ID4 and Eagle is moving. It's moving pretty well, actually, for this time of the morning. 81 degrees outside right now. Very warm. And now for a look at what is trending today. One man's Chipotle burrito hack is taking the Internet by storm. Dylan Gross posted this to the website apartmentlist.com. He found a way to get 86% more Chipotle for no extra cost. His strategy calls for ordering a burrito bowl and then a lot of ingredients and two tortillas on the side and then wrapping all of the ingredients yourself. He says it saves you money and you get a great meal out of it. I think a lot of people are trying that out now. Maybe Chipotle will figure it out. And beauty trends from a galaxy far, far away right at the drugstore. CoverGirl is releasing a limited edition makeup collection for the upcoming Star Wars movie. I'm not sure how many women are going to go around looking like that, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe it'll start a new trend. It won't come out until next month, but you can get a sneak peek 
at Allure.com if you'd like to check it out. Star Wars The Force Awakens comes out this December. And a cat from Oregon is officially the world's oldest living cat. Guinness World Records says Corduroy is the world's oldest cat at 26 years old. He was born on August 1st, 1989. He's been with the same owner the entire time. He looks pretty good for 26 in cat years. Does that work like dog years? I'm not sure. Seven years? I don't know. They've got nine lives. We'll have to research that. And stay tuned. We will be right back. From News Channel 7, time for 7 First Alert Weather. Another warm night. 81 degrees right now. We've been in the 80s all night long and breezy southeasterly winds, but what a beautiful sunrise. Look at the colors showing up on the clouds there as we look toward the foothills. It's going to be another hot day, but nowhere near that 106 degree reading we had yesterday. Instead, we'll be in the mid to upper 90s. Still very hot, but certainly a little bit of relief. And we had a little moisture coming up in the south during the night for some scattered thunderstorms, which have since moved on to the east. There could still be a few affecting portions of south central Idaho and some of the mountain areas, but a cold front will make its way in from the west throughout the afternoon and evening and bring some cooler air our way. 97 degrees today, a bit smoky from time to time with the breezy conditions. And then we expect temperatures to cool down into the 80s by tomorrow and near 90 degrees on Sunday and Monday. So a little relief coming our way, Maggie. All right, sounds good, Jim. We need that relief. Definitely our firefighters need it. Right now, let's get outside at I-84 and Eagle and show you traffic. It is moving along well here at I-84 and Eagle. Usually, we have a lot of congestion at this time, but things are looking pretty good right now. Well, the soda fire here in Idaho has already burned over 218,000 acres, and wildfires are stretching all across the country. Fire officials have raised the threat level to the highest fire danger possible. That comes as forecasters warn of what's being called a Godzilla El Nino event this winter that could trigger some of the strongest storms we've seen in decades. Miguel Almaguer has the latest. This is what they call level five. The highest fire danger rating in the nation triggered today. The drastic move signals tinderbox conditions on the verge of exploding. This year of extremes feeding on each other. Fire fueled by crippling drought, exacerbated by a heat wave. And now the forecast calls for a monster El Nino this winter. Storms capable of triggering floods, mudslides and mayhem. We have four year record drought. We had late spring rains and now we're seeing conditions that firefighters have never seen. For now, the biggest threat on the fire lines. This year already proving historic. Nearly 40,000 fires torching 6.4 million acres. Firefighters from every state mobilized and moving west. Today, the Forest Service launching two C-130s to drop retardant, while the 747 Super Tanker, the largest firefighting aircraft in the nation, moved into position in Colorado Springs. When fire season is finally over here, a new threat will begin. These drought-stricken hills will be ripe for mudslides if El Nino predictions hold true. Scientists say warming ocean waters are surging towards the U.S. With it, the potential for once-in-a-lifetime storms. This El Nino could be among the most powerful ever. This is the Godzilla El Nino, if it matures and actually comes to fruition. Great droughts always end in great floods. A year of extremes after an explosive start. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News, Los Angeles. Well, we have to check in with our dean right now, jo Dean Johnson. He is live at the Incident Command Center, and he has been talking with the PIO for the very latest information on the fire, the soda fire. So let's get to him right now. Dean, what do you know? Well, Maggie, that briefing just ended. I'm actually joined now by Jake Brawyer. He's the PIO. Now, Jake, it sounds like you had quite a bit of activity with this fire overnight. That's correct. Uh, yeah, uh, we were putting in our lines last night during with our night shifts and about one o'clock uh, temperatures actually warmed up a little bit and we had some gusty winds come in from the west and uh, fire made some angry runs as you could say in the west uh, made a push towards the flat valleys out here uh, we did go ahead and issue a recommended evac for the wilson cemetery and hard trigger areas um, uh, nothing is, is mandatory at this time, but uh, we actually did have to wake up some of our day forces to go uh, help out the night forces. And so we got all hands on deck basically to go out there and secure that area. And we made some good progress last night and we're going to continue to uh, do that today and uh, see what the weather brings. Uh, we're predicting some uh, the cold front moving in and 
I don't know if you can see behind me, but we have some clouds moving in, and, and with that will be some cooler temperatures and higher humidities, which is always a friend for firefighters, but also some gusty winds that we're predicting as well uh, from the north uh, northwest. So um, we'll see if that pans out and uh, what kind of outcome we'll have from it. All right, Jake, well, thanks so much. I know you're a busy guy, so we're going to go ahead and let you go, but it sounds kind of like weather is really the key and the main focus as far as today goes with the soda fire. Maggie. All right. Thank you, Dean. Let's hope this cool down is going to help those guys out. They need it. Top stories and weather coming up next. Great news for the West Valley All Stars Little League team today. They are only two games away from competing in the Little League World Series later this month. These 12 year old All Stars were here in our studio before they headed off to the World Series regionals. They were really excited to be heading to California, but they had a different goal on their minds to do something that their head coach, Tony Hildy, hasn't been able to, uh, hasn't seen done that is since 1999 and only once in the state. Now, I know you're their coach and I yeah, know you love them. I do. Do they have it in them? They do. Um, we've traveled all over the West Coast mm -hmm. this year trying to play the best that we can play. And, and, oh, and um, we've, we've had a few losses, but they're all by one run. The team lost the first game in the regionals against Washington, but bounced back with a shutout against Alaska on Tuesday with a final okay, score of 10 to zip. Just the elimination there. game against Montana Wednesday night was a win with a final score of 16 to 11. They now have claimed a spot in today's semifinal game. We will keep you posted on how the West Valley All-Stars do. That's pretty exciting stuff. Let's go now to Jim Duthie and talk about the weather forecast on your Friday. Hi, Jim. Hi, Maggie. Hot, dry. At, look at the, the sunrise this morning. Very beautiful with the uh, color reflecting off the clouds, but it just belies the fact that we're going to be very hot once again today. 81 degrees to start with right now. Southeast winds, 13 miles per hour, and overnight have gusted up to anywhere from 25 to 40 miles an hour. Some thunderstorms rolled up through the Magic Valley and the Central Mountains. They're gone now. We even had a few little showers drift up toward our area, and there may be a couple of other ones here and there, but they won't produce much rainfall. Gusty winds will be the problem today. Kind of breezy ahead of a cold front that will start moving in across Oregon and reach southeastern Oregon this afternoon into southwestern Idaho toward evening. That'll shift the overall winds from the northwest and bring some cooler air in. So expect a high of 97 today. Breezy, smoky at times, cooling down though by tomorrow to around 85 degrees. So great news for firefighters. Yes, we need that cool down for them to fight these fires. Thank you, Jim. Right now, let's check in on traffic, show you what's happening here at ID4 and Linder. You know what? Eagle and Linder looking really good right now. It's a great time to get in the car. Head out onto the interstate if you need to go. And here are the five things you need to know before you leave the house. The soda fire has caused evacuation recommendations overnight. The Owyhee County Sheriff's Office tells us there are evacuations along Highway 78 from Givens Hot Springs to the Hard Trigger areas. That fire has now grown to more than 218,000 acres. It is only 11% contained. Many of those people choosing to stay in their homes. New overnight, a fast moving lightning storm moved through the Magic Valley overnight. It sparked several fires. Twin Falls and Jerome County Dispatch say the first reports of fires came in at 1130 last night. Most of the fires were knocked down by 130. The fires were in the Buell area and near Highway 30. I-84 is back open between Baker City and Pendleton. It was closed yesterday because of the Cornette fire. That fire is burning about 13,000 acres in East Oregon near Baker City. So far, there have been no reports of structural damage. It's only 10% contained. And Ada County Dispatch says fire crews still watching the aftermath of that 60 acre fire that burned near homes in the Boise foothills. It came so close. Look at the fire line there. The fire was reported yesterday afternoon. It came within 50 yards of homes near Villa Ridge Way and Erie Way. A spark from a circular saw started that fire. And the Idaho home where Ernest Hemingway wrote his last pieces of work before taking his own life in 1961 has been listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The house is in Ketchum and we have a gallery with photos from the inside. You can see a lot more. It is still preserved the way Hemingway had it.